And Longhao, I have a question. Why we use in 32 underscore T instead of just using int? Okay, good question. Uh, so the main reason is that uh, you can use int on the say Windows and Linux machine, and so it should be fine. But uh, in some embedded systems, int has some uh, has a different uh, called bit width, so it might not be uh, thirty two bits long. So here, if you uh, specify in the thirty two, uh, then it it tells you it tells the compiler to use uh, thirty two bits as the uh, width width of of this uh, uh, of, of this type. So it'd be a little bit safer for you to use across different platforms. Got it, thanks. Okay, so just uh, type this uh, thing in a, in a different uh, source file, build uh, both in release mode and debug mode and uh, run the program and see, see the difference. So what about Frank? Uh, have you have you done typing all this all this code? Uh, yeah, yeah. So what, what is the result you have by running both the program? Uh, let me try that. Can you, can you share the screen for us? Uh, let me turn on the screen sharing first. Yeah, and then you ask the about yes, yes, uh, that's correct way. Uh, yeah, okay. In uh, lines uh, twenty two, so target link libraries you should be yeah should also be tested too. Okay, compile options. Yeah, and 
Orang dah config kan anda, okay? Orang uh, config tiba kan config release, okay? Oh, okay. Oh, you can ask. Okay. Right now the actual sanitizer started complaining. So, the, so this, this is uh, the effect of the actual sanitizer. And then, uh, yeah, and then uh, to try execute the release mode, the program generally in release mode. Uh, you can actually uh, open uh, multiple terminals. So on the right side, you will see a bash. On the right side, right side, yes. Right, uh, yeah, a little bit, down. okay. Yeah, you can open up another terminal. Yeah, and navigate to release. Uh, yeah, so click the first bash, and you will see a, it's called a uh, square with a center line. Uh, okay, just give me the screen, I will show you how to do it. Yeah, just share screen. Yes. So here, um, uh, if you want, if if you wish to open uh, another terminal, yeah, you can just click this button, this square with the center line. Yeah. So you can um, have multiple uh, terminals uh, in one uh, just uh, in one screen. So just navigate it to release, and then run test two. Yeah, can you can uh can you share the screen again, Frank? Yeah, okay, that's good. Okay, yeah, that's uh so. There, so there now there's a clear difference here, right? So. On the back side, it shows you a very long error message. And on the release side, is nothing happened. So, Frank, what do you think? What, what, what do you think was uh, the problem with your code? Do you, have any, do you have any ideas? <clears throat> ah, there we go. Um, I was saying um, <clears throat> the, um, the debug side tries to run it line by line, but then the release uh, compiles the whole thing and tries to figure out what we're trying to do. But um, it is it's it is a bit perplexing why uh this side has error but this side somehow understands what we're trying to do yeah because uh yeah that, that's also an effect of, of using different compile flags and address sanitizer right so uh mm -hmm. here uh so uh, yeah could you please uh, scroll to the uh, top of the debug message error message so you will see here it says error address sanitizer here can you see this message message so it, it, it tells you that the, the address sanitizer start complaining. So why does it complain? Because it detects there's a bug in your code. And the bug it encounter is called a stack buffer overflow. Uh, right. Followed by the error message. Um, and it shows you the address, but uh, uh, those addresses are uh, just uh, the address on the memory. So it doesn't give you too much information. And uh, then you look mm -hmm. down uh, by two lines, it will show you in main. So uh, you will see a number sign here, zero. Uh, so, uh, so there's a blue line here, read of size four at uh, zero x seven ff on thread uh, t zero. See mm -hmm. this? It will see, it will tell you that yeah. you are trying to read a data 
which is size four uh, in the main thread. Mm -hmm. And then the line uh, uh, below it, it, it actually tells you where it goes, uh, where uh, which line is echoed. You see? Right. Uh, line five. It's called, yeah, so it's line five. So what's, what's wrong with that line, line five? So anybody else know the problem? Chao? Because you don't have index five. The maximum index is four, I think. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So the, yeah, it's from zero to four. Is, uh, yeah. So I designed this piece of a code then, just to, uh, to uh, show uh, all kinds of memory problems you will encounter in your code. So the line five is actually so-called a stack buffer overflow. So you, when you create a, a, a buffer, or it's just, a, it's just a, an, an array in line four, but this length of the array is only five. So based on the syntax in C++, the maximum index you can, uh, you can, uh, you can have for indexing all the uh, data is four. But now in line five, we put five in here. So this caused a invalid or a, a, a illegitimate memory access. And then in the debug mode, because we are using the so-called actual sanitizer, uh, it tells you that you have this problem and it will, it will stop the program immediately and it shows which line is that. So it gives you more debug information. On the other hand, if we use the release mode, it will tell you that array five is zero. But in fact, you, you don't have access to array five. So it, it actually reading some memory that, uh, that shouldn't be accessed. So this is actually dangerous because sometimes the memory uh, outside this, uh, uh, this array may be some sensitive information such as password or some say somebody's bank account. So if you write a code, but you made a mistake, uh, say uh, you indexing something that should have been indexed and, and accidentally it prints out somebody else's password, then your code has a security risk and it's a very serious bug for a product. So that, that's why uh, we, uh, uh, I use the, uh, I encourage you to use uh, actual sanitizer in the debugging phase to figure out all the problems, especially memory problems in your code. And after there's no warning um, produced by the address sanitizer, then you can safely run your program in the release mode. So you, you will see that in release mode, it just runs silent without any warnings, but the debug mode, it tells you something goes wrong. Okay, so, not, uh, so any questions so far? Hmm. So Frank, do you understand what's going on in your code? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the next thing is to, Common out line five. So now we know there's a problem in line five. We common this line five. I recompile all the stuff again and then run and see uh, what, what happened next. Okay, uh, now the next thing, the, uh, Cindy, uh, could you please show your screen? Oh, so if you, uh, 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 Frank, uh, just wait a second, Frank. Sorry, uh, Frank, just uh, show the screen again. Yeah, so you just you need to tell you something. Also, yeah, so you have you you see this warning here, right? So this error because you have unused the uh, variable array. You notice that. Uh, this is an error because uh, it's because we set uh, this uh, dash w error flag. So um, it produces this error because the array five we declare and define the, the array five here, but it's not it's, it's never used in the main program. So it will produce this warning. But now it, this warning is based on an error, so it will create a compile error in the compilation. So in order to suppress this, just come out line four as well. Yeah, then uh, compile again. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, now it should be uh, uh, compiled without any uh, any errors. Okay, now, uh, Cindy, could you please show your screen and uh, see the results of the, the, the program? Okay, uh, let me see your code. And when you write, uh, when you, uh, yeah, just come, uh, okay, and then what is the result of uh, if you run both? So, yeah, uh, let me see your, uh, okay, let me see your semantic lists. Uh, could you please go up a little bit? Cash. So what, what, what about you, Charles? Have you uh, get the similar results as Frank? Uh, yes. What about Sean? Yeah, what's, okay, let me take a look at this. Uh, Um, so how do you ex execute this code you know, and release deeper? Hmm. So it's the first first program, the test one. Uh, so you see a, a clear difference between the performance, right? In terms of test yeah. one. Yeah. No, it's not no clear dif clear difference. Yeah, so somehow your the re release build and debug build is the same. So you may want to check if uh, uh can you run the config again? Just uh, the config debug and the config. Yeah, those two again. Config release. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you, you, you should run uh, uh, config debug and then build debug. So config build, config debug and then build debug. So you are setting that the flag, right? config debug and then build debug. So there, so there is an order for this. And then config release and build release. Okay, then there's a, uh, and just to test it. Okay. No, still not working. So what, what about the speed uh, to test one? If you run the test one, it will be the same. That seems like why why this um okay, can I uh, see okay what's good release this uh debug okay release. 
what, what, what about builder? Let's so build the release or yeah, it's be the same. That's a, yeah, it seems like you are doing it all in release mode. Okay, can we, uh, okay, just, no, no, we just skip it for, uh, uh, we just skip this problem. Uh, we, we just proceed to the uh, next topic. Uh, I will figure out uh, uh, offline, okay? Okay. Yeah, uh, can you show the, can I, okay, Chow, can you show your screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, now, uh, so there, there is a still a problem here uh, because uh, yeah, so that, that's what I designed for this code. So Chow, can you uh, tell us what's going on uh, in your code? And what, what, what does the error message mean? So, so first, in the line thing, since I already delete this variable, and uh, it shows that I'm visiting something that does not exist. Okay, so what about the release uh, execute? So the release program execution? It should, it should run silent. Yeah, nothing happened. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so if you don't use Azure Sanitizer and if you just let this error exist in your code, then this uh, deleted uh, deleted uh, pointer will uh, can still point to some invalid memory address, and it gives you now it gives you zero. But some somehow if your program if it points to some other uh, memories, it will either cause your program to crash or it will display some uh, information that shouldn't be accessible. So is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now uh, just coming out. Uh, uh, line 11 to line uh, 14. And then uh, recompile again and see. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I see. Uh, no, uh, it should also come out of line 15. Line 15 and line 16. Yeah, that's line 16. Yeah. The release mode can. Um, yeah, now, now it's, uh, now we always switch to Shangyi. So can you show your screen to us and uh, see what's going on in your code? Oh. Yeah, Uh, what about Shangyi? Uh, can you show? Can you share your screen? Oh. All right. Okay. Uh, so Frank, can you show us your screen? So after coming here, the for the slides. Okay. Yeah. So now 
just to tell us what the problem is right now. Um, it looks like uh, there's only two values stored in pointer two, but yep. this is trying to access uh, three, so it, which doesn't exist, right? It's trying to put this new line okay. into um, index three, which would be the fourth, but uh, yeah, there's no fourth. So now, now it's a so now it's different from the previous one. So previous one it says stack buffer overflow, right? So if you remember, now it says heap buffer overflow. So what what's the difference between the description here? So what, what what do you think? What's the reason for this difference in terms of the description? What what is different between stack and heap? I'm not sure, actually. Not sure. Uh, what about child, do you have, have any ideas why the di the description here is different? Um, because the uh, the length of this array only have two, but you're visiting index three. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the no, yeah, So this is an error message. But the, uh, remember the first time we reach uh, say line five, the error message we produce is a stack buffer overflow. Okay. Now so, it has a heap buffer overflow. So, so the 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 problem is the same. Now we are indexing something that is out of range, but uh, the error message is a little bit different. So what what, what I'm saying here, do you know what's the reason causing uh, the uh, the description, the difference in terms of description? So what's the, what's the difference between a stack and a heap? Is that because they use different data structure to store this? This value? Uh, well, they are both int, right? In the 32. Yeah, but one is array while the other is just variable. Is that a reason? Uh, so anybody have any ideas? <laughs> What's the difference? Why? Why? Yeah. So now, now you can just uh, uncommon line four and line five, and uh, see, and then run the debug mode again and see the uh, and see the, the error message. Yeah. The build again and let's see they will produce a different kind of error message but the problem is the same right? you are you are indexing something that is not in this array so you notice it's stack buffer overflow and uh, right now if you reach uh, 15 it says heap buffer overflow but uh, have you uh, anyone have any ideas what what, what about the, the, the what's the reason of this difference in terms of name Well, um, we first define an array, but here it's a uh, it's a pointer. Um, well, it's close. Now, now it's close. So, uh, so in line four, what do we hear? What what do we have down here is is we, we specify a uh, stack variable. So, we, so th this variable is uh, um, is stored in what's called a stack. Of this pro, uh, of this function, so uh, you can treat it, uh, this uh, uh, area. Uh, the the memory of this area has already been set in the compile time. So compile knows, okay, when you, when you enter main function, you will need a, a, an array of five containing all the numbers. So I will put those uh, uh, array or uh, put put this data on the so called stack of the function. However, if you reach line 14, you will see that we use this uh, keyword new here, right? So it's a dynamically allocated memory by the programmer, not, not the compiler. So this uh, uh, array is located in a different memory section. It's called a heap. So the, the difference, so now is the difference because this one is uh, the, four, uh, the variable in line four. Uh, we call it a stack variable because it is determined at the compile time. And uh, the, the variable here, the array here at 14, uh, at 14 is a heap variable. So we use the new keyword to allocate it on a heap. Uh, then we can uh, dynamically, uh, we can dynamically uh, adjust the, the length of the uh, heap variable according to the, our uh, program. So it is not known by the compiler uh, at the compile time. Now, the address sanitizer tells you if you have a heap buffer overflow, 
then you should be uh, looking for variables that is allocated by using the new keyword. If it tells you something like a stack buffer overflow, then you should be looking for variables that um, is allocated without using the new keyword, such as the one uh, in line four. So there, now, now you have some ideas about the difference in terms of names. Okay, uh, so what about Chao? Uh, have you uh, any questions about this? Um, so far, so good. Okay, good. Okay, now we proceed to the final, uh, uh, okay, final line uh, should be, So uh, now we common out, uh, uh, no, it's not, not line 18. Uh, so we just common out this uh, SD out, or, or we just change it to, uh, no, you don't come out. So we just change the three to two, and then let the program run through the uh, SD out. Okay, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so now, uh, uh, so for this SD out, we don't uh, access to the uh, to uh, to actually force a uh, certain number a force number of this array. Uh, we access uh, say we change it to zero, and then uh, recompile the program again and let the program run through this SD out and see what kind of error message it will produce. Uh, Shang Yi, can you share screen now? No? Oh. Okay. Now, Chao, can you share screen now, class? Yeah. Okay, yeah, now it's our turn. Okay, so you should still see a problem, right? Oh, no, uh, uh, can, you, uh, can you actually build without any warnings or errors? In the debug mode. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, so now uh, you will see a different kind of error message now, right? So what, what do you think? Wait, what, what is the problem of this code right now? The delete function doesn't match. We're creating an array, so we should delete it as an array. So yeah, so we'll, we'll, what, should, what should we do to uh, to, uh, to uh, clear this uh, error message? Uh, add a bracket here. Yeah, and then you go to, okay. Yeah, so this problem is that uh, when we use uh, a, uh, uh, this uh, square bracket to uh, allocate a heap memory, uh, and then we we need to delete the, the heap memory using delete plus this uh, square bracket. So if you don't use this, uh, the square bracket, it, it actually uh, will cause a memory problem. It's called a memory deal of mismatch. Yeah, so re let's recompile and see whether this uh, problem goes away. Oh, it's gone. Okay, good. All right now, now this is the final uh, example that for today's uh, tutorial. Uh, okay, now we we'll... okay. share my screen. Okay, good. So, any more questions so far about building uh, uh building a semic uh semic uh, basic semic program uh building with different compile options.
as well as address sanitizers. Any questions so far? No questions? Okay. Uh, so final, no, so because, okay, this is the final uh, slides. Uh, I will introduce some useful plugins for VS Code. Uh, the first one is the task manager. I hope you all download it and install this. Uh, so here, um, uh, along with all these uh, directories we just created, uh, create another uh, directory called a dot. So there's a period here, VS Code. And inside this folder, uh, create a, a file called uh, tasks and dot JSON file. And what you are doing here is that uh, you can then copy all this. Uh, uh, you can go to my GitHub uh, account and directly copy uh, the uh, content of the .json file uh, into your workspace. So just copy all this uh, code to your uh, .json file. And after that, you should be able to uh, see uh, like four buttons or, or five buttons here. So on the leftmost uh, column, there is a, um, a column shows all the plugins and the browsers. And down here, you should be able to see a icon called a task manager. And after you add all these contents in the tasks.json, um, it will automatically create all the button for you. So you don't need to type uh, uh, the name of the shell script to execute anymore. You can just click this button and it will work. So it saves you some time in terms of uh, building and uh, configuring your project. What is store shell? Uh, just ignore, ignore that. It's uh, don't worry, don't worry about this uh, thing. It's just a uh, a redundant button, so you can just remove it or just to leave it at it. It's it's all it's for uh, later uh, later courses so when I uh, uh go through the installation and the uh, package management. So right now you only need to use the first four buttons. Uh, for the, the configure and the build. Yeah. So everybody, uh, uh, have you? So are these the button show on the task manager? Have you any problems? What is? What, what, what about you, Frank? Have you yeah, seen the button? Yes. Okay. Good. So if, if you click the button, it should run the sales build for you without typing all the commands. How do I uh, make a button that will run test one? Yeah, sure. Uh, then you can change this type and uh, change its command to uh, to test one, and uh, then just you can just run it as uh, as if it's, it is a shell script. So the type sure is still you... shell, or is this something else? Uh, it's something else. It's a, a executable program, but it, it can still.